Good day ladies and gentlemen, my name is Cornish Knight and welcome to the Age of Decadency. This is a 3D turn based RPG by Iron Tower Studios. It's it's a very sort of grim fantasy kind of game set in a post apocalyptic classical world. I'm really enjoying it and I thought I'd show it to all of you guys, so let us dive straight in. The Age of Decadency is a very difficult game for what you, from what you're used to. It would be a harsh and unforgiving and really doesn't take much to end up dead. In fact, it's painfully easy, especially if you try and play the game the way you normally play RPGs. When you ro when you roleplay a mighty hero who is able to handle any challenge to smite either do it by the dozen. Yeah, this doesn't happen. This stuff here, beating like people by the dozens like you would in Skyrim and stuff, doesn't happen in this game. If you're you're lucky to sort of take on three guys at once and come out alive, it's quite realistic in a lot of ways. In this game, combat is always extremely dangerous. It's the hardest way to handle the quests and progress of the game, and even a couple of thugs can easily put an end to your adventure. Keep in mind that you're not expected to beat every fight you are offered. There is no shame in walking away if your character isn't a killing machine. Optional fights are usually the hardest, so don't jump at the first opportunity to be a brutal murderer. This game isn't lean linear, and, there's not, and it's not about killing people, which is something I really like. A lot of games sort of make you turn you into sort of like a one-man army, butchering hundreds of people on your way to complete the storyline. And I don't really like that. I find it a bit unrealistic. Be aware that many people will not hesitate to lie to you, steal from you, and betray you. Should they see fit, use your head, be careful what, what you say, and always look out for yourself, because no one else is, and no one else will. Which is quite a true thing, I mean this is basically sort of like a, po a post-apocalyptic a post world where it's pretty much the Roman Empire is falling, has fallen to bits and everyone is desperately just trying to survive, so no, no one is going to have your back really if you don't look after it for yourself first. Right, this is a tour of section. Hold on one second, I might just turn the music down a, a tad. Ah, I can't do that yet, so I apologise if it is too loud. Right, now, what are we going to do? I was going to call him... Rakatus... Rakatus Axe... Axe, that's not how it has to be his name. interesting is Rakatus is a Cornish king whose name is found inscribed on a stone, a 10th century Cornish king whose name is found and starts inscribed on a, a stone which you can see at Penley House in Penzance in Cornwall. I'm trying to be as accurate as possible when it comes to sort of period names. Basically, the name of the Kunu Kunuvi, Kunuvi tribe, which you sort of see on Roman maps from about the 4th century for Cornwall. So, I just thought it'd be a bit nice to do that right. Gender in this game plays a role. If you play as a bloke, it has some benefits for intimidation and stuff like that, and physical stuff. If you play as a woman, other benefits apply as well. This is sort of grim rea realism, so this stuff does actually have an impact to a certain degree one way or the other. You have your backgrounds, you have like assassin, which is obviously for like, the, the like imperial assassins. Um, you've got the thieves, these two are very sort of like your your typical sort of de facts, um, de facto sort of classes. As you can see that you have like facts and reputation which once you select a class it has effects. For example if I'm an assassin the imperial guards hate my guts. If I'm a thief, cons comir cor comirum, com comirum, trade, basically it's the Merchant's Guild. The Merchant Guild hate my guts. A lot of the noble houses hate my guts. Um, Praetorian Guard, is, oh, they're basically like the Praetorian Guard in um, classical history, which were they are like elite, elite bodyguard regiment. Um, Historically, the Praetorian Guard were important because they normally ended up deciding who became emperor. 
Emperor because you had to buy their loyalty otherwise they tended to kill you though there were Emperors that came around who were not favourable with the Imperial Guard and they got their position because they had the loyalty of the, of the General Army and the Praetorian Guard though very well equipped and skilled can't t couldn't take on a whole army on their own Law Masters are basically Preservers' understanding of pre-war knowledge and technology is a lucrative business and increased increasing number of people seek their salvation in the assets of the past and thus the market is becoming saturated with icons and objects from the old empire. Basically, this is like the fall of the Roman Empire. It's They've had like a classical Roman Empire and it's literally gone to pot in a fantasy world. It's does not... They say it's like low magic, but I've been playing the game for a while. I have not seen any magic whatsoever. So, it's more sort of like grim realism, like Mountain Blade Warband. It's sort of like what you call like grim fantasy rather than high fantasy. This is not a nice place to be. You've got a grifter that's sort of like a petty like con artist and starts off with no bad reputation. You've got a drifter that starts off with no bad um, reputation for anybody. You've got a mercenary who's like your de facto fighting class and starts off with some okay reputation with some of the factions. Merchant starts off with some better relationships with some of the factions. And as they said, you don't you don't have to fight in this game. They actually advise you that unless you know what you're doing, fighting in this game is quite a dangerous thing to do. Sorry, just having a drink of my water there. Um, so we'll probably just go with a mercenary because I sort of like the class. Just quickly give him a bit of a tan because if you are out in the sun all day you really do work up tan. Give him some face paint. Give him a beard. I like playing characters with beards. There we go. That looks good. This basically sort of tells you, this thing here tells you what they sort of want you to do, or well, advice, really. To sort of, you have six primary stats to find a character's innate physical and mental abilities. Between them, they are determined the starting combat and um, civic skill pool, basically these two pools here. As well as modifiers for your reputation. They also check are checked in dialogue, interaction, text segments to allow access to specific gameplay options, so like most standard RPGs. For your first play, we recommend not to spread your skill points too thin. If you're playing a fighter, stick to two, two to three combat skills, one weapon, dodge or block, and a supportive skill like critical strike, alchemy, or crafting. Until you understand the system better and know and how to do more and how to do more with less. Basically, this is like all like a balancing act. When you level up in this game, only these things go up. Your health doesn't go up. Your strength and these, this stuff here doesn't go up. So what you start. I mean, some of it does, but it doesn't actually increase your health. Your health is fixed permanently with, with your starting stats, so it's not like in most RPGs where your health will increase as you level up. You can die just as easily to an axe to the head at the beginning of the game as you can later on if your skills and equipment isn't up to snuff. Combat or odds are on combat odds are always almost against you, which might make you feel that you have to min-max to stand a chance, however you can easily gain an edge by using different tools the game gives you, everything matters, attack type, weapon, armour, support items like nets and alchemy potions and vials, and even positioning. Yeah, this game is quite tactical, it's basically a cross between, I suppose, Neverwinter Nights and Fire Emblem, which is that you have the Neverwinter Nights style of um, of sort of like RPG skill management combined with the turn-based combat mechanics of sort of Fire Emblem, but it's a bit, bit more in depth. If you're playing a non-combat character, focus on core skills and stats, and choose of the chosen professor and merchants benefit from high intelligence and charm and persuasion and streetwise and trading. Law masters need crafting and law. Grifters do well with charm, impersonation, and streetwise. Basically, yeah, this is advising what to do. In true, the introductory Vignette is a good test of your character skill. If you tell you what skills you need and what you expect in general, if you have any trouble with common back, try a combat tutorial first. Introductory Vignette, yeah, basically, that's interesting. 
hybrid character skill that take talking and fighting are very hard to master on your first run, so you'll be strong and suggest you go into f you go through the game with a specialist first and leave the hybrids for later. The game is very re replayable and each playthrough will give you a different experience, so first playthrough is merely an introduction. Please note that once determined during the character creation phase, your character's HP will not increase. Unlike many other RPGs, there is no character progression, progression levels and the HP value is static throughout the game. Consider your decisions carefully. Basically, our hit points here influence combat skill points yet. Yeah. Basically, constitution affects two things. Our overall health, so if I take one out of dexterity and put it into constitution, I get more health, but then I can't dodge as well. So it's all sort of what you want. Action points are used for basically fighting. It's I'll get into it more in depth. So I could take one out of intelligence. Intelligence of food is no combat skill pool during the character generation turns bonus skill points. Don't really want to charm. I'm going to be like on minus thirty influence and non combat skill points pool. It's not fantastic, but I'd have to lose something like dexterity, which I don't really want to do. So I'm going to keep this stuff relatively static for now and just dive right in. To buff my block. Hmm. More critical strike. I'm at skill level novice. Keeping your eye open and will allow ta attack seem to help. 3% chance to cause bleeding on a critical strike. Next level 6%. I could up that. That could be really useful. Or I could just basically bump up my. Have an 18% chance to combine with that, which is free. That might be good, actually. I might do that. Streetwise, because basically I'm trying to play as a mercenary here, and, you, and then with Streetwise, it's a mix of different traits, ranging from shrewd awareness to the inability to trust. But the most helpful when one deals with people, basically, I'm a mercenary, so this is kind of thing that I'm going to be doing. Unfortunately, it's going to take most of my skill points to do this. Right, streetwise, yep. So I've got five points left. I think I'm going to throw it. Right, we could do trading, theory, understanding, core commerce matters more than the art of buying cheap traders. So it's satellites, the power of gold, uncovering hidden opportunities, and teaching and teachers for everything has a price. Unskilled, you get a good deal on, on all on these magical beans, really, basically. Yeah, I'm getting ripped off. See, look, because at the, my current level, sells for fifteen percent of value, buys for for buys for one hundred twenty-five percent of value. So basically, I'm getting ripped off badly. Um, next level means that I get twenty percent of value. Uh, I don't know. There's lots of really cool things in this. Law's really interesting, but I think I have to go with trading just because I, I'm going to be being ripped off by everyone that works that I work for. Otherwise, house reputation is still standing. That's good. The f attack is yeah. Let's do this. That lord lorded over provident to combine advanced armies have been reduced to broken city states. Imperial Guard, remnants of the Imperial Army, act as deterrent to open warfare. The knowledge of the old days have been all but forgotten. Hucksters peddle ancient words to no value to the ignorant, and the lords seek and hoard artifacts they barely understand. A fanatical mysticism is slowly gaining favour, and long held resentments are rising to the surface. Some speculate that another war approaches, others actively encourage it. Times like these bring nothing but suffering for the common man, however, they offer a once in a life opportunity for those to turn to seize the moment to fall to its richest power and glory, and often an untimely death. Your adventure starts in Tiron, a small crumbling town far away. 
hold on, let's try, let me see if I can, oh, I can't do anything in the volume, sorry about this folks, I'll have to figure it out in a second. It's been dying for the last 200 years or so, kept alive only by the combined efforts of its inhabitants. Broken stonework has been replaced by makeshift wooden constructions, creating the impression of a new town slowly emerging from the ruins of the old. Much like Tehran, the noble house controlling the town has seen better days before the war that toppled the empire and the devastation that ensued. House Duraton was one of the most powerful houses, but, there was, but that was then and times have changed. Today, it is barely enough strength to maintain its hold on the local guild. This is very sort of like what would have happened when the Roman administration pulled out of out of Britain in the classical period. We have archaeological evidence that the Roman citizens tried to keep stuff going, and you can see evidence of them trying to repair towns and stuff like that, but over, over time they abandoned them because of the administration cost and energy used is much, much too high for any kind of small group to do without a larger infrastructure. Let's dive right in. You make a living providing a protection service to the inn's patrons. When you were too young to know any better, you spent your days drinking and fighting. Your dedication to the craft and it was noticed and you were offered a job at the inn. Now you were paid to break heads when locals are getting too drunk and out of control and the drinks are on the house. Fantastic, but this is a small like indie games company. This isn't something like Bioware or Bethesda. You're not going to have fantastic graphical engines. And I play games for story and content rather than graphical fidelity. And let us just quickly fiddle with the volume for one second. That's better. It seems that the music was set. Quite high. Though I do like the music in this game, it can be a bit overwhelming at times. Now, where were we? Right, we were in the inn. The inn is full of guests. After spending weeks and sometimes months on the road, you have an unhealthy app they who they have an unhealthy appetite for cheap wine, stove cooked meals, and women, women willing to save their beds for a few coins. The innkeeper shouts to you, Rakatus, Rakatus, Rakatus Cornuia, come here. Right, just going to say this right off the bat: this game isn't for, for minors. If you are, un, if you are under the recommended age for this product, please do not view this. Thank you very much. And just to let you know now, let us go and talk to our boss. The innkeeper turns to you, easy on the wine, Rakatus, Rakatus Cornuia. You're working tonight, remember? Don't worry about it, boss. As you talk, a tired man in a dusty, weathered clothes enters the inn and looks around. Several caravan crewmen carry his chest and bags inside. The man carefully inspects his belongings and, after a brief conversation, pays the crewman. Hail to you, Master Garrus. Is it Garrus? No. Gar. Yeah, yeah Gar. Well. Garius? 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 It's been a while. How many, how may we serve you? The innkeeper, I apologize for that, I have problems reading names sometimes. The innkeeper attention is on Garius, which doesn't prevent him from gesturing to, to his servants to pour great Garius some wine, three fingers to indicate the quality of, of the wine, a roast fresh bird over the coals, and to move the chest into a storage room. I do apologise. My brain is not working at the moment if, it's, if I start saying things wrongly. The room for me, a room for me and storage for my goods. Find me a good law master and send one of your guards to make sure that I am not disturbed, says Gaius. Gaius? No, it's Gaius. Gaius, sorry, I do apologise. Tossing the innkeeper a coin. That's interesting. He's wanting a law master and someone to protect him. Hmm, I wonder where that is. 
Did you hear that, Ricatus? Our guest requires the pleasure of your company, so clean yourself. Cl so go clean yourself and do something useful for a change. I need better gear. Now you're telling me go to the trading plaza, but do not waste any time. The client is waiting. Good day, Ricatus. Please tell me what you need. This is like a trade. This is this is the marketplace. I'm just going to quickly show you around. In here, you can trade and buy food and items and clothing and stuff like that. As you can see, this whole world is sort of falling to bits. The statues are overgrown, the buildings are run down. A lot of like the tiles, like the earthenware clay tiles are sort of broken and battered and the walls are falling to bits. So yeah, this town has very definitely seen better days, but for now we still buy some equipment. Welcome to my store, my friend. I have the finest selection of goods available at unbelievable prices, so please make yourself at home and browse the merchandise. And remember, when in doubt, buy it. It's better to regret buying something than to regret not having it when you need it the most. Am I right? Why am I telling you this? You look like a smart kid, so now, so you know this already. Am I right? Browse his wares. Basically, he's going to be riffing me off. He's going to be charging me like 120% more on items, so yeah, I'm not particularly happy about that. This is a trading screen, blah blah blah. Now, what have I got? I've got a rather rubbishy small shield, some auxiliary armor, light leather armor with a metal soda guard. During, during the war, lightly armored auxiliary troops provided support to the Imperial Legions. When the Empire fell, surviving units formed the mercenary companies. They are their own masters now. Right, so... It's not particularly fantastic. Bronze, made out of bronze. Damage resistance 4, armor hardness 20, blah blah blah. Max AP 11. Armor penetrating 15, sneak penalty 1 versus... Yeah, so all this stuff sort of ties into things, so for a start, I want better armor, I'm not particularly happy with this, so I'm going to sell it to him. For 14 gold, god he's ripping me off. And pick up good old lacquer segmenta. Lorica segmenta. Segmented armor comprised of overlapping metal strips fastened to leather. So leather straps, simple and inexpensive. The standard armor of the legions was an unofficial symbol of the empire, recognized and feared everywhere. So this is basically your standard like Roman armor. I'm gonna grab that. I'm gonna. I don't really like the small sealed, bulky uh, buckler, damage resistance for. I might just grab a normal infantry sealed. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do that. That's most of my gold gone now. But, got some better gear out of it. Yeah, you have all kinds of items, all kinds of nice, interesting swords and pots and everything else. All weapons have a place and a usage for in this world. But I'm just going to go with your sort of this. And I seem to be naked. Hmm, that's not good. Let's just jump into the character equipment scene. You can see what he looks like here. Give him some armor. Throw his helmet on. Actually, I just want to test something. Can I put a dagger in the other hand? I can. Hmm. Uh, obviously, it must switch out. So you can't do two handed. Well, weapon in each hand is him. Hmm, that's a shame. So there we go. Going to put my little net around weight mast cast a net with lead weights around the edge successful throw and tangle opponent for two turns like significantly reducing his combat ability there's my character looking a bit more roman mercenary now so now we shall head back to the merchant's guild and see what our boss wants go right away because he's obviously going to be a bit pissed gaius the trader looks at you critically frowning at, at the dents in your armor Keep unwanted visitors out of my room, he says, before turning away. You're not be, you will not be disturbed, master, and you soon you decide, decide to go into a corner and stand guard. 
Gaius percepts in success, you are awoken in the middle of the night by the sound of clicking coming from the lock. From the lock, the door opens and a shadowy finger, a fat shadowy finger, slips inside the room. Determined to earn your pay, you put on a show, lunging at the intruder and making enough noise to wake up the trader. When you are satisfied with your efforts, you throw the unfortunate thief out of the room and turn to the trader. Who was that? asks Gaius, looking visibly shaken. See, look, this is where my streetwise comes in. I was successful on a streetwise test. If I didn't have it, I wonder how it would have turned out. Streetwise success, an assassin master, he almost had me, but I couldn't give up knowing that your life was in peril. Always useful to basically suck up to your boss who's paying you. I owe you my life, claims, exclaims the trader, appearing great, great, greatly relieved. If you're ever in Mar Madderun, if you're ever in Madderun, talk to Ken Kenib. Kem Nib, 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 Knib, and tell him I sent you. He is careful and doesn't hire anyone without a recommendation from someone he trusts. He will take care of you, Ricatus Cornelia. Thank you, Master. Cass, no, sorry. A shadowy figure slips into the room and through the open window, and without wasting any time, he raises a loaded crossbow and points at the trader. Assassin. Cassius says the assassin calmly, the commissum wishes to remind you that you are still not welcome in this town. He pulls the trigger before finishing talk he finishes talking and Gaius falls down with a bolt in his chest. Commissum Sium Commercium. Oh it's the Merchant's Guild. So the Merchant's Guild are basically wiping out the opposition. But I'm still having to do my job, and I was paid to defend him, and even if my boss is dead, I am going to throw myself into combat to avenge him. Right, this is how combat works. It's basically on the grid system. Combat in the age of decadency is turn-based, which means that each participant takes turns and has a certain number of actions, points to use. A bit like um, Fire Emblem. We'll sort of go into this sort of later on. I'll explain it as we go. So first off, he's just sort of crossbow at me. You're... You block the assassin's attack, reducing its damage to zero points. Draw and seal absorb thirteen points. So now I'm going to rush towards him, and I'm out of turns. If I wanted to, I could basically switch up my um, aim for particular parts of his body and all that kind of stuff. But at the moment, I'm out of points, so I'm going to have to just end turn. He's going to swing at me with his sword, and he hits the shield and my helmet, but he does no damage to me. Now I've got a hit chance of 61%, a base of 50, attack 47, defense. So I'm just going to move back slightly so we can see the details. Armor damage, actually damage chance. Critical strike, 2%, bleeding, 2 damage. So I could change this, for example, I could go just with a regular hit, and it would drop to a uh, 46%, but I'd do more damage. So I might do that. Let's just... Hmm. Actually, I might just whack him with a normal attack for now. I'd get less damage off of him, but it's a better chance to hit the bloke. Missed. Damn. Hit him. He's bleeding, slightly wounded. now I'm out of points but he's actually now bleeding so he's going to be yes you swiftly strike the assassin for three points of damage the armor absorbs two points but my weapon but with my skills I managed to cause bleeding dealing two de dealing two points of damage for the next two turns so he hits you for one point of damage god he's really pummeling me at the moment and it's now my turn, so I'm just going to continue to lay into him. He's quite got quite a high dodge chance, unfortunately. And he keeps on dodging my stuff. That's not good. Hmm. I do have a net. I suppose I could throw a net at him. Out of movement points. He's still getting through my defences. I need to finish this quickly. He's wounded. He's badly wounded. He's 
really badly wounded, and he's going to be bleeding for more. Yeah, he's going to be bleeding now for some more damage. Come on, hold out, man. I'm basically holding off the damage for the moment. Come on, bleed it. Like, drop, damn you, he's almost dead. The assassin sort of staggers there, sort of, like, holding himself up as the blood sort of gutters out of wounds and cuts, looking very, very annoyed. I'm holding off most of his damage. My defense is holding up. Armor penetrating. The problem is, he's got light armor, and I, I believe my sword is a slashing weapon. It's not fantastic, but... Yes! Blood gusses out of the wound as from your last wound, and the assassin convulses and falls down. He doesn't get up. So we've sort of taken care of that. And end the combat there. As you can see, combat in this game is... You offer yet another sacrifice to death, and smiles, who smiles upon you and awards your dedication by whispering insight into your ear. One combat skill point gained. See, look, so if we go to our skill points, you get. You basically get bonuses for doing stuff. I mean, at the moment, I'm okay. See, look, general reputation, I've got one body count. Tells everyone how many people have crossed your path and ended up dead, and so is that you aren't squeamish when it comes to killing. So all this stuff sort of influences things like word of honor. If I break my word too much, that will probably be a bad thing. Let's just search the assassin for now. He's got 60 gold coins, so we've got to take all that. Well, let's just take out all his stuff, actually. I don't know if we can sell the arrows, though, so we're just going to leave him there. I don't think... Yeah, we can't. They're not worth anything. His arm is broken as well. Leather armor, armor hardness... Maximum AP, armor penetrating, armor penalty 6, sneak penalty 0. So basically, him wearing this, basically because I hit him so often his armor value went down. Because he was wearing this it meant that he was really good at sneaking, but it gave him basically, a ma he gave him 6 penalty to his armor value, so he was taking more damage. It gave him a critical strike bonus of 20, or 30 though. Leather tunic crafted hardened boiled leather. It's not designed to stop heavy blows, but won't slow down. Won't slow down a thief. Won't slow you down either. So you're your typical, typical sort of assassin's garb. That's cool. Unfortunately, my Gaius is dead, so that's not fantastic. But I'm going to still get paid, so I'm going to take that. A couple of jewels. I know. Look, look. He didn't pay me, man. Okay, I need the money. A gold ring. Hmm. Now, I don't know if I take his clothing if people are going to accuse me of basically stealing all of his stuff. So, I'm going to leave the clothing on people in case someone goes, Why is there a naked corpse? Because that could potentially happen. And I don't want to be accused of, of stealing. Let's try the chest. You take anything valuable from the chest. Let's go and get call my boss. There's nothing left to do but wait for the innkeeper to sort out this mess. You notice that the trader is clutching some parchment in his hand. You take it mostly out of curiosity. It's an old map. Might fetch you a couple of imperials, which are basically like the coinage in this game. Wait for the innkeeper. Fuck, says the innkeeper, looking at the dead trader thoughtfully. Well, I suppose we all knew this was coming. Although it would have been nice if he killed, he was killed elsewhere. How do we? You expect me to run a business? He sighs. His his goods are still in storage. Contin um, his goods are still his goods are still in storage. Continues the innkeeper in a different tone. We can sell them to the cons com commercium, commercium, for nothing, or we can actually make a few coins. What do you think, Ricatus Cornelia? Wouldn't say no to a few coins. All right, then take the goods to Cado. Then the Dennis will handle the negotiations. So all you've got to do is watch his back and so that we mean business. The easiest money will make. Well, the easiest money will ever make. All right, let's go next time. 
go rest till the morning. So, we could probably rest and heal up, but I just want to try and get a bit more cash in my pocket at the moment. The 40 Thieves Guild is large and seemingly in the in the sorry, in the 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 ding. And then, uh, I can't read the word, I do apologise. Um, network of thieves and smugglers and other criminal inclined citizens. The guild operates in every town and traces its origins to the early days of the Empire. It is said that in the past, the 40 kingpins of the 40 largest towns used to coordinate networks. Opinion is divided as to the relations and ties of the 40 thieves of yore to its current inca incarnation, but the name is persistent. In Tehran, the guild is operated out of a local tavern popular destination for people who feel at home in city parts of the town and dark alleys. The tavern is full of people laughing, arguing and drinking at the back of the tavern. Piles of loot sit at top tables waiting to be counted and divided. At the far end of the room, Cador conducts his business while keeping an eye on the guests. Ah, for Dennis, my friend, how are you? Cador is all smiles. Who's your friend? Don't tell me you feel you have to bring some muscle with you. I'm hurt. Cato checks his goods, pays without haggling, and just let and just like that, your deal is done. Let's head back, says Vardenis. Vardenis, Vardenis, looking relieved. The fogs come out of nowhere. You follow Vardenis, who grows more confident with each step, take, talking business and making big plans. Two men stop when two men step out from the shadows. They look at Ved Vardenis and smile as if he were their long lost kin. Spare a coin, one fog asks, pulling a knife and smiling at his joke. Take out your weapon. Yes, I have not much choice, I'm busy acting as a bodyguard at this point. The fog, you don't so e don't be so eager to die for nothing, friends, as the fog. You see Vad and, Vad and me go way back. We have a lot of catching up to do, don't we? So here he throws you a goid coin. Take the, right de r take the rest of the night off. Could walk away, but Vardenis is basically carrying all of our money, so I'd rather try and keep the gold we've got. So I'm gonna fight to save my employer. Well, well, first off, I need to get into combat with this guy. So, God, I'm using a fast attack, and I've only got like a 50 chance to hit him. Oh, nuts! Press the wrong button. He's beating me up pretty bad. I don't know if my employer will last. What I was going to do was I, I meant to press my inventory button. Now how do we take this out? I mean... Ah, I'm just going to hit him. He dodged. <laughs> He's really pummeling me. Oh, he's hitting my arm. I'm going to be less accurate now. He's going to go down. I can just see if I don't if I don't do something quick. Quick, quick, quick. Don't have enough skill points left. Yeah, this guy isn't going to last. I'm not getting any critical hits off on him. This isn't good. Two damage goes through to me, I'm low on health. But Dennis gasps in pain, tries to say something, but chokes in his bottom falls to, the, falls to his throat and collapses. That's really bad, I'm outnumbered now. This guy's almost dead, but I'm going to get tag teamed if I'm not careful. God, yeah, they're getting me from all sides. I need to hit this guy down quickly. This is not good. My shield really works. It's helpful, but they're going to gang up on me and beat me. I'm. Oh no! Come on, hold on, man. The 
Thug tumbles awkwardly backwards and dies right on the ground. Alright, let's try and fight this bloke. At least my shield should be able to basically help me a bit. Oh. Yeah, it's absorbing a lot of the damage, but they keep on hitting my arm. They are targeting my arm, so it means that I'm not hitting them as accuracy as I'd like. Hit them there. Damn it, stop hitting me. My shield is like blocking a lot of the damage, but it won't last forever. Ah! This is bad. I really need some... really need some blood. At least the penalty is descending, maybe, because I'm losing feeling in my arm. I'm blocking... and down to 11, 13 HP. Barely a scratch. Damn it. Yeah, my hit chance is going up. They've obviously been aiming for my arm to try and stop me. See, look, if you aim for, like, an arm... Effects low damage, minus 10% hit chance, damage chance, minus 50. But amount effects, yeah, basically, it affects a p it puts a penalty on that on on the person you hit. It means they have can't hit as well. I'm just gonna keep just punching him with the basic attack. Oh, this is bad. He's wounded, but I'm. I'm heavily wounded. Oh, I got him bleed on him at least, but oh god, this is going badly. Come on, come on, hold on, hold on. By this point, like I'm staggering all over the place, blood is dripping from like stab wounds because they've been coming at me with a nasty looking little like. It looks like some kind of like stiletto-like knife. I mean, maybe, yeah, it's definitely got like a nasty stabbing edge. Badly wounded. Plus, I've got bleed on him. He's like, he's not looking particularly good. His arm was all cut up and he's in a really bad state. He's ordering me to sort of go back and herd sheep, but I'm not going to do it. Oh, God. Hold, man, hold! I'm really bad, my everything, my strength is sapping, I'm like on my last legs. And with my last blow, I managed to just like lunge past his knife and drive my sword into his collarbone. I'm down into his chest cavity and finish him off with one strike. The thug clutches his wound, blood, but blood continues to flow through his fingers and he falls down with a surprised look on his face. There, yeah, that was close. Then Vardenis. Vardenis should have the money on him. He won't need it where he's going. Gotta take everything. Take all. I'm, sort of, I'm clutching my wounds by this point and just sort of bleeding out all over the place. And I'm just sort of desperate to sort of stagger home. You offer yet another sacrifice to death who smiles upon you and rewards your dedication by whispering in sight into your ear. Plus one combat skill. Points gained. And I hope our mistress is happy with her offering. It is a busy night, but you've seen worse. Dying for nothing is easy these days. It's staying alive. That's the tricky part. I'm like on... I'm literally on... 5 points of HP, I'm going to stagger back to the inn and try and patch my wounds up and get some rest. The innkeep. Where is Ferdenis? Where is the money dead? As is often the case when one chases, when one chases easy money. Fuck, says the innkeeper mirroring his earlier statement. Oh well, at least we tried, eh? You gain new insight, which can be used to increase your skills. 11 skill points gained. Yeah, we, we tried. Got any jobs for me? Seeing that the last two men that were, you were supposed to protect ended up dead. No, not really. Ricatus Cornelia. Sorry, no, not really Ricatus Cornelia. Sorry, I'm still getting used to saying the name. Your Imperial, the Imperial Guards are crew, recruiting, though. Might be just the place for you. Might be. Do you know any good law master? Do you know a good law master? Talk to Feng. Right, 
Right, I think we just got to go and rest for the night and we'll explore town. Yeah, I've basically, I've gone and had a nice, good sleep. And we are back in our establishment. I think this is where we're going to call it quits for the day, folks. I hope you've enjoyed this. I am going to be playing a lot more of it. If you have liked it, please press the like button. If you wish to subscribe, please press the subscription button. Links to my Facebook and my Twitter page can be found in the links below. I've been Cornish Knight, and this is the Age of Decadency. And I'll catch you all next time tomorrow.